So Tom Slingsby, we were talking two years ago, I think, in Belmont when you just started on your your moth experience. Yeah. Two years later, uh, how's the moth going? Uh, well, I sold it straight after those worlds, and I've just got one a couple of weeks ago again. So uh, I haven't been sailing much at all, but I got a little bit of training before this, a couple of weeks, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Now, in in the in between, you've had a lot going on in your world. There's been a gold medal. There's been a big America's Cup gig for you. Um, does the moth still do it for you? Is it still the exciting little boat that it was? Yeah, it's still my favourite class. I'd say. I mean, I love laser sailing, but I love it for different reasons. I love the competitive nature, I like one design boats, but for the moth, for a pure boat to sail, is nothing beats it in my eyes, I've done a lot of other sailing, uh, A-classes are great boats too, but uh, for me the moth is definitely my favourite, it's just the speed and, and the thrill of sailing and the feeling of flying, it's just uh, something else. Now, you're known as one of the fittest dinghy sailors, obviously with your, your laser experience and your gold medal and several world championships. The moth sailors talk a lot about the fact these are really physical boats to sail, the, the hiking out. Give us your comparison. I mean, you, you sail one of the hardest boats, the laser, for hours and hours up when, well, that's what it looks like to us. What's it like as a comparison? It, it is similar. Um, it's a very different way of hiking because when you're going upwind in the moth, you've got it heeled right into windward. So you're actually, instead of all the load being on your thighs, you're tucking your, uh, your feet up to stop yourself from falling out the back of the boat. Um, there's a lot of core work involved in the moth, definitely. Uh, at the moment, post-Olympics, I haven't been doing any fitness training really, so uh, I'm not as fit as I used to be. But uh, it's definitely a physical class and if you could work on your core work and, and a bit of leg strength it'll definitely make you go a lot quicker in the moth. And in the laser people talk about weight all the time, weight and height and leverage. What would you say is the optimum weight height for a moth? Uh, I guess you've just got to go off the guys who do well in all conditions around the sort of 80 to 82 mark it seems at the moment. Um, Peter Burling's good in all conditions, Scott Babbage is a bit better in the lighter stuff but he does well in the heavy and he's probably around 75, 76. You can really get a mast and sail to set up for your weight and uh, you can do well in all conditions as Scott and Joe Turner show and Nathan show that in all conditions they can do well. It's just really finding that right sail and mast combo. I'm 88 and I'm a bit too heavy but uh, I still have a lot of fun. Now, um, the, the moths are great, obviously, for learning and, and reinforcing all sorts of skills. Um, in terms of your America's Cup program, how much can you take from what you know and you've learned through moth sailing into trying to get a multi-hull to sail above the water? Um, it's hard, really. It's just I think you just feel a bit more comfortable up when you are on the foils. I know when I sailed on the 72, when we would jump up, you'd see a few hands like really grab the pedestals and, and a bit of nervous times. But for me, I, I feel very comfortable up there because I've done so much of it. Um, in regards to boat designs and stuff, they're just two different beasts really and um, I learn a lot just about the finish of the foils and how water flows over the foils and the lips of the foils that you're looking to create lift and things like that. So I take all that into the, the AC stuff but um, I think it's just mainly the comfort and the, and the confidence of when we're up on foils, I, I feel very safe and steady and uh, yeah, and I bring that experience in. Now, as part of the Macus Cup team, clearly there's, there's a whole new world that you've gone into, highly professional, masses of media, some restrictions on who you can talk to, there's spying, there's, I mean, it's very exciting stuff, isn't it? Yeah. You're now part of that, Tom. Yeah. How does that, and does it affect the way you actually go sailing day to day? Uh, it doesn't really. I mean, when I'm over there in San Fran, we're just, every day we go get there and we talk about what we're going to achieve each day, go out sailing. So for that sort of stuff, it's exactly the same as my Olympic program. We, I have a meeting with a coach, but except we've got a big team meeting with 30 people in the meeting and we talk about what we want to achieve for the day. We head out in the water, we are very uh, professional in the way we get things done at Oracle and uh, everything sort of we come off the water with everything written down, we achieved, achieved, achieved and uh, so I think from my Olympic campaign it's just a little bit more professional and on the water it's very similar though and then off the water then all the design meetings and all this sort of stuff it's a whole new world for me but uh, I'm taking it all in and I'm loving it. Now with what happened with the big crash in October when you're obviously one of the guys on board clearly Oracle are on the back foot to a lesser or greater extent mm -hmm. but you're on the back foot that, that's that's for sure. Mm -hmm. At this point in time you go back in January I guess it's uh, I mean all you can do is give it your give it your best shot. How do you assess your chances now and how would you assess the two main competitive team or three teams Artemis, Luna Ross and New Zealand give us your very top line assessment. Uh, I think yeah we're definitely on the back foot it, it set us off the water for quite a while but um, we had a team meeting after it was after the crash and we still think we're in good shape. We, we'll be back on the water in February. We're happy with our boat, we like our boat. Um, 
obviously a Team New Zealand look quite good. They're, they've done a lot of training, they're on schedule, and that's a big thing. They're, they've got their time on the water. And, uh, but I, I still think we're in good shape. I think uh, we'll come back from it and we're still on track to win the Cup in uh, September this year. Well, you had a huge two years um, from the last time we talked, Tom. Hopefully, there won't be another two years, but Tay, best luck this weekend. Thanks for talking to us. Yes, thank you. Cheers.